again, we give uh, God the glory and, uh, again, so blessed and uh, opportunity again today to teach and develop our young men about the game of football, um, but more importantly about the game of life and, and hopefully they continue to uh, broaden their horizon on their relationship with Christ. Uh, I want to thank the fans. Uh, again, they were tremendous in our game here uh, last Saturday. I thought the enthusiasm was uh, really, really good there, particularly there in the fourth quarter and continue to support us, continue to uh, be involved in the game. And so on uh, behalf, again, of our players and our coaching staff and everybody, I want to thank our fans, and uh, we appreciate your support and prayers. Um, I want to also just say it was great to see our coaches, our players, really be prepared to play a game uh, of this magnitude. Again, you're going to have close ball games, and you want to know how your kid's going to respond, how your coach is going to respond. And uh, I'm proud of the way we responded. Uh, I know we've learned a lot as we evaluated here in the last 24 to 48 hours of what we did well and the things we do uh, need to improve on. So it was great to see our coaches and players again and, and uh, respond in a good way. Uh, Jacksonville State, uh, John Gross, a uh, fantastic coach, uh, has done a great job there. Uh, uh, again, I think it's undefeated there in the uh, Ohio Valley Conference. You know, won whatever 30-plus games in his uh, three or four years there. Um, I mean, they've been tremendous on offense. They've been tremendous on defense, tremendous in special teams. Uh, and it's no different uh, this year. Uh, uh, talk about their defense. Uh, I think they got eight, nine guys back. Uh, you know, they got a lot of talent. Defensive line is probably the uh, strong point of their defense. Linebackers can run and fly around there pretty good, and they got their secondary there back there too. So they're one of the top defensive units in the, in the country. Uh, they played two pretty good football teams in the first two ball games. Tennessee Chattanooga is good. Uh, obviously, Georgia Tech is a very, very, very good football program. So I know statistically you may look at some certain numbers and all that, uh, but they can they can play. They can play. So we're going to have to play our best football game. There's no question about that. Offensively, the running back, Rock uh, Thomas is big time, big time guy. He's a physical guy, good vision, good speed. Um, he can do it all. Uh, he can make you miss. Uh, he's a powerful runner, uh, but he can uh, do a lot of great things from that side of it. A big athletic on the offensive line. Uh, again, last year we faced them, and they're, they're no different than where we were last year. Big guys, very physical, very athletic. Um, they do a lot of different things. Uh, their receivers are solid. Their quarterback, they do have a new quarterback. Uh, he's very athletic. He's tough. Uh, he's throwing the ball there fairly well. I know he's had one or two picks here and there, but uh, he's a tough young man. I've, I've seen him run and do some things of that nature that um, show me that, again, he's only played two ball games, but um, – I think he has some very, very good talent. Special teams, why I think their punter is very, very solid. I think he um, has kicked two or three balls there over 50 yards, and their returners are very uh, shifty and athletic. Uh, so, again, they're very talented. Uh, we just going to have to make sure we match up to what they're uh, able to do, and hopefully we can um, have them play up to what we can do as far as uh, our talent. But uh, we'll see what happens. Um, Injury report, uh, we have uh, Lucas Irons is questionable. Solomon McGinty is probable. Uh, Kamani Donaldson is questionable um, as far as uh, for this ball game. And then I think the other thing is the, the keys to the game. I think we got to come out and play well early. Uh, we need to keep it close early. Um, and then, uh, unfortunately, these last two ball games, uh, really particularly, the, maybe I should say all three, penalties. Uh, we must be under 35 yards of penalties. Again, I'm not going to sit here and say we – not going to have penalties, but we got to make sure that we clean some things up. Uh, we're going to continue to address that pretty seriously here this week and a lot of things and techniques and drills that we're going to do to make sure that our guys uh, play the game with discipline, uh, but play it play it hard, play it fast, play it physical, uh, but play within the rules. And I think that's going to be very, very crucial uh, to handle that. Then uh, when the special teams, when I say when the special team, I'm really more speaking about field position. Uh, we kind of keep track of, uh, I guess we call it, Hidden yards. Uh, this last ball game uh, was not very good. The first two ball games were very, very good. We were uh, you always want us to think of being plus, and we were minus in our first ball game as far as the ball. I think it was minus sixty something yards uh, that we uh, lost there against Indiana State. So those are the things in this case that uh, can really be very hard to overcome uh, in those two or three areas. Again, starting early, uh, penalties, and we must uh, have great field position whether we're punting the ball, the return game, or whatever it may be in the field position. Open it up to uh, questions. Coach, this one uh, kind of got out of hand last year here at home. Uh, what's been the mood of the players here over the last couple of days, you know, in the preparation? Do you see any difference in them heading into this one? 
Um, same excitement. Uh, they're focused. Uh, we know that we got a lot of work to do. Uh, you know, we're all a little disappointed in, in the way we played overall, but we're all trying to get better. And that's kind of been the theme is, you know, uh, talking about what can I do, coach, uh, to improve my play. And I like to hear that. I like to see that. And uh, that's what our guys have done so far uh, preparing for this next ball game. Going back to last week's game, were you given an explanation why 24 seconds were added to the fourth down play when you probably called timeout right before the first fourth down play was called? Well, I've got an explanation from the Big South Conference. Uh, they've admitted that there was a timing error into that, and uh, that's all I've been told. And if you need any uh, further explanation, I think you need to contact the Big South Conference. Coaches, is your team this year I'm sure it's a lot different than last year, but is it? Do you feel like a better team than the Liberty team that played here last year? Well, you know, I it's hard to say. Um, I think we're in a better uh, state of mind, just just a mindset. Um, last year we went into the ball game, we were still trying to figure out who was the quarterback. Um, so we played both quarterbacks, and uh, so I think there was some inconsistency there. Um, a little bit on the offensive line. There are still some things we're trying to iron out. Uh, so there is a difference, uh, particularly on the offensive side. There were a few things last year on the defensive side. We still was trying to get a few other things figured out from the safety position and so on. But uh, So we're all a little bit different in that we're pretty much settled in where we're at as far as who's playing what position and not just the quarterback position, really all positions. We, we pretty much got our guys who are our top guys and who's going to play. Um, I think we gained a little bit more depth uh, this year in some other positions, uh, particularly in the first two ball games, where they had to play a lot of people. So I think we got a little bit better depth. I'm still got a few things we want to get uh, a little bit better at, uh, but overall we are in a different aspect of our team compared to last year. In your tenure at Liberty, the blocked field goal has happened on numerous occasions: Coastal Carolina, Gardner Webb, and then last week, you know, to kind of the last play of the game to win the game. Um, what is it about that that you know, has been able to happen? I know some of that's just coincidence probably, but is it something that you're teaching a lot, put a lot of emphasis mm -hmm. on that, in, um, whether it's training camp or during the season? or you know, How are they, those uh, block kicks keep coming up? Well, you don't want them to come up, but uh, uh, we prepare for those things. We uh, do a lot of what we call situational football, and we uh, put the scenarios up. Uh, in pregame, uh, excuse me, a preseason practice and also uh, during the season. Uh, and it's just great to know that we have been prepared. I think just like we all know in life, if you have preparation and then when something called, it's not really a big deal per se when you're ready to, to execute it. Um, our guys are excited about that opportunity. Uh, and it's great to see that our coaches have coached our guys in a way where they believe in it. Um, not just in that aspect of it, but really all the different things that come up in the game. You got to be prepared, and when you hear the calls been made, you're ready to go. You're ready to execute. You're not looking around wondering what to do, when to do it, and how to do it. So again, our coaching staff and players, knowing that they trust our coaches, they trust what we're teaching them, they trust in what we're doing, and they understand the how and the why. I think that's always a great motivation for a lot of people when you know the how and the why, and when things are told and when things are called upon, then you understand it and you go get it done. And uh, so just a great job by our staff. One of the keys that you had mentioned in previous weeks was limiting explosive plays. And Indiana State was able to get mm -hmm. a lot of explosive plays, especially through their passing game. Uh, what areas do you see need to be corrected in order to limit what Jacksonville State can do with uh, the big games? Well, I think a little bit of that going into the game, uh, we talked about making sure that we stop the run. And uh, against Indiana State, I'm stating. Uh, and so our, our defensive side of the ball, we just want to take our chances a little bit more stopping the run in the past. And they were uh, called a little bit of a vulnerability. They took advantage of some of the things that they saw, and they executed very, very well. Um, so I got to give credit to Indiana State. We had to make a few more adjustments there later in the game as well as with our secondary and all that, and uh, we made those adjustments uh, to that. Jacksonville State, uh, you know, they're, they're, um, they can do both. You know, they're, they're good running the football. Uh, they got an outstanding back, so tackling is going to be a huge factor in this ball game, like it is in any ball game. But I think those are things that we want to make sure we improve on is our tackling. We want to make sure that we eliminate, hopefully, as, as, as many possible as far as the uh, big plays, particularly in the run game and in the passing game. Play action pass, you know, you know you, you're going to give up one, maybe two or here or there, but you don't want to give up multiple things of that nature as far as explosive play. That has been something we've talked about. Uh, we just got to improve on that. Hopefully this ball game will be that game.
Coach, last year, I mean, first of all, Jacksonville State's really stout against the run. They have been since Grouse got there. But last year, you guys were held to 44 yards. I mean, how how do you improve upon that this year? I know, I know the offensive line looks a little bit different now. I mean, is that going to be a key as well? Well, running the football is always a key. Um, it's not necessarily maybe the yards that you gain. I guess if you always want to look at it from a – 4.0 yards, 4.5 yards is what we want to average. Uh, if we can do that, I think we have some success. Um, but again, we know we can do both. When I say do both, we can run the football and we can also throw the football very, very efficiently. Uh, so I think we need to be efficiently running the football. And if we can do that in a timely manner, uh, particularly as the game moves along, they might do some things there early on, but as the game progresses, it may look like a two-yard game and then they eventually be six yards or eight yards. That's what we hope to see as we move forward in this ball game. What presence did you miss with Solomon not playing last week, and what effect can he have on a game? Well, I think uh, you know we had uh, quite a few guys uh, at the linebacker position. Unfortunately, we're not able to play there in Irons and uh, McGinty, and they should be available this week. Uh, I think the thing that may be missed was just a little bit of leadership. Uh, a little bit of mentality-wise. Uh, it seemed like he always had the knack to be at the right place at the right time. Not to say that our guys, I'm not saying that they played bad. They really didn't, the four guys that played. Uh, they played pretty sound uh, as far as that goes. So I think those are things that Solomon can bring to the table that can help our defense just to even be a little bit better. Uh, getting buckshot here was obviously a big recruiting coup, and, and you all said that when he signed and then last year. Um, but what was it that you, you all saw in him in film in high school that you felt comfortable being able to tell him in the recruiting process that um, you know, he would have a chance to play as a true freshman? Oh, I think it really would probably maybe trigger that he came to our camp um, and we saw him throw the football. And uh, I think he all saw probably all of us who and on about uh, the way he was spinning the football. And uh, there was a genuine interest uh, that we had in him. Uh, you know, we told him we weren't going to guarantee that he was going to start. Uh, we just told him that he's going to have a great opportunity to compete for a job. And then we'll see what happens after that. And uh, so I think that that was a big help. Um, his dad was here, too, and got a chance to meet all of us. And uh, we just appreciate God's prayers, and uh, they decided to come here. So, uh, again, it was a great thing to, to have him come here to show some interest in us. And then I think he saw the love that we have for him and, and a sincere, genuine interest in his ability that he could be a, a really, really good football player and a really good quarterback here at Liberty University. You talked earlier about giving up some <coughs> passing yards last week to Indiana State, but uh, defense collectively this year of the first three games, could you kind of evaluate what you've seen to this point, and are you expecting there to be improvements next week going against this Jacksonville team? Well, I think our defense is going to improve. Uh, I think as time continues to move on, I think they're making some good progress. I think the biggest thing that they've done, they've done a great job on third down. Uh, I think we're somewhere around um, stopping them here 20, 30 percent of the time, less than 30 percent, I believe, on third down conversions that the offense has been able to convert. That's huge. Uh, there's some other stats that are not very good. Uh, so as we all know, you can pick and choose certain areas where we need to improve on, but there are certain areas they've done pretty well in. Um, so I think uh, most part, I think our offense has uh, done a great job, but uh, that's also helped our defense. So it's a team uh, game, it's a team effort. Uh, I'm not concerned at this point in time. Um, I think Baylor was a very, very good football team on the offensive side of the ball. I think Moorhead State did a great job of game planning. They had a good scheme that's going on. We were able to slow them down a little bit. But I have to give a lot of credit to Indiana State. Um, you know, they eventually uh, gave up a little bit on the run and started throwing the ball a little bit more than maybe we expected. Uh, and then also the receiver. He was a really good football player there, number four. Uh, maybe a little bit better than maybe what we anticipated. But, again, everybody has good football players, <clears throat> but you got to find out how you're going to respond. And I think our defense will respond in a good way as we move forward. Todd Macon has dressed and participated in pregame drills the last two weeks. Is he mm -hmm. close to returning? And do you, have you guys set a date for his return? There hasn't been a specific date. Uh, I think the next week is a legitimate chance. Um, but the doctor's going to make that decision at that particular time. So I would say here in the next week or two, he has a great chance to be back in the, in the play. Coach, do you think your players look at this as <clears throat> a chance for another statement game, maybe people that weren't convinced uh, on the Baylor victory? Do you think this is another chance to open some eyes around the country? It's another football game, another, another chance to win a game. And uh, uh, the name of the uh, opponent, 
Jacksonville State. Uh, we're all right now in this phase right now to see what they do and why they do things on offense, defense, and, and special teams. And our guys are excited right now. I think they uh, really feel good about where we're at and where we're going and ready to play another good football game. We know this is going to be a very, very good opponent. Um, we're just trying to get better as a football team and keep uh, pulling together as a unit. From what you've seen so far, is this the best team that you've seen on tape that, you've, <clears throat> that you'll see this year? Um, I, I don't know the, how to answer it in, in a situation because of Baylor when we uh, their first ball game they didn't know exactly who was going to be playing, who was not going to be playing and all that. Um, you know, it's hard to sit here and say uh, the talent is equal. There's probably in some areas that uh, they're better uh, at it. Baylor was better at it in certain positions. Uh, but I think it's 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 almost somewhat comparable. But it's uh, we'll know after the game. I can tell you that I'm not going to get into all the speculation of who's better and who's worse. I know they're very talented at almost at every position, and we have to play our best football game.